Governance is not rocket science. Any politician telling people to wait forever before seeing significant changes in their lives or the economy is another way of saying they are incompetent. Tinubu has been in office since May 29, 2023. In a few weeks, it will be 10 months. That's enough time to effect significant change. That's enough time to bring down inflation. Now, let's compare Tinubu with Javier Milei of Argentina. Despite spending less time in office than Tinubu, in fact, Javier Milei was sworn into office on 10th December 2023. So he has spent only three months in office compared to Tinubu's almost 10 months. Javier Milei recognized the gravity of their problems. That's why he took drastic measures, unlike what Tinubu did. Let's make a comparison. Javier Milei reduced the number of ministries from 18 to 9. On the other hand, Tinubu increased the ministries and appointed the largest cabinet in Nigeria's history. As at this moment, there are 48 ministers in Nigeria's federal cabinet. So in Argentina, Javier Milei understood that they needed to cut the cost of governance because of their economic situation, while Tinubu in Nigeria increased the number of ministries instead of reducing them to less than 10. After all, permanent secretaries can do the job in the meantime. When Nigeria gets out of the woods, he can appoint more ministers. But no, he used the position to pay them back for the loyalty and the work they did for him during the election at the expense of taxpayers. Back in Argentina, Javier Mille, in trying to reduce the cost of governance, sold all the planes in the presidential fleet. He started flying commercial. This singular act alone must have cut down millions of dollars in government expenditure because these jets have to be maintained. In Nigeria, Tinubu did not sell off the planes in the presidential fleet. He put them to use. In one instance, his son flew in one of the jets from Abuja to Kanu with many bodyguards and his associates. The flight time is less than one hour. Tinubu himself has been going on many trips abroad with contingents that sometimes run into several thousands, like the climate conference in Dubai. Nigeria had more than 4,000 participants. Tinubu also approved payment for Toyota Land Cruisers worth more than $30 million for National Assembly members. He also approved about $1 million for purchase of vehicles for his wife who doesn't have a constitutional role in government according to the Nigerian constitution. He also approved about $4 million for the renovation of the presidential mansion located in the former capital city of Lagos. He might not visit this mansion even once in a year, but he still spent the money anyway. His administration is also currently building a new mansion for the vice president in Abuja at the cost of about $10 million. So you get the gist, they are about spending, while in Argentina, they are about cutting costs. Back in Argentina, Javier Milia just sacked the labor minister for unilaterally increasing the salaries of ministers. When their economy hasn't come out of the woods, in Nigeria, a few of Tinubu's ministers were involved in corruption scandals. One specifically transferred money from a government account to a personal account. She was only suspended, not even sacked. Up till now, no one knows how far with the investigation. She has not been charged to any court. Notice the difference. Javier Milia sacked a minister who made an administrative error. The minister didn't steal any money. But Tinubu only suspended a minister who breached the law by transferring money to personal accounts, which is criminal. So you can see the difference between the two of them. The most interesting change that Javier Milia did in Argentina was done last month in February. For the first time in 12 years, Argentina experienced a budget surplus. Just two months in office, he was able to achieve this. He started with himself. The change must begin with the leader. He deprived himself of all the trappings of office. A president that flies commercial. Back in Nigeria, there's no budget surplus, it's still deficit. In fact, a huge percentage of the budget is funded with loans. Tinubu has also printed 7.5 trillion naira since he came to power. That's equivalent to about $5 billion. 
The second most interesting thing Javier Millet has done in Argentina is how his policies brought down inflation in the country. When he came to power, inflation in Argentina was about 150%. In February, it slowed to about 15%. In Nigeria, Tinubu's policies increased inflation instead of decreasing it. His policies have led to the increase in the price of food, transportation, overall cost of living. Everything has increased by more than threefold. He removed petrol subsidy the day he was sworn into office. Nigerian manufacturers and SMEs rely on petrol and diesel to power their generators because public power supply is epileptic. As a result of this, more than 700 factories closed down in 2023. The high cost of diesel in Nigeria, a major oil producer, is one of the reasons most of these factories closed down. The second reason is the devaluation of the Naira. Tinubu devalued the Naira by more than 100%. The Naira is currently floated despite the fact that Nigeria's central bank doesn't have dollars to meet demand. The Naira devaluation led to an increase in customs duty. In summary, Nigeria is in a deeper mess, worse than before Tinubu came to power. He is supposed to be improving the situation like Javier Millier is doing in Argentina, but unfortunately, he is making an already bad situation worse. So the difference here is that the Argentine president started with himself as a true leader. He is not spending time telling people to hope for a better future. He is leaving it himself, he is cutting the cost of governance to the lowest minimum. While in Nigeria, Tinubu and other top government officials are living large on people's money. They are telling people to hope for a better tomorrow, but their actions show that there will not be a better tomorrow. They are living their tomorrow today. They are enjoying all the trappings of office. They don't want to cut costs, and they keep deceiving the people that miraculously things will change tomorrow. Governance is not rocket science. The difference is clear. They like to make it seem as if it is difficult, but the problem lies with them. All the money that they waste can be put to better use. Two countries that were facing high inflation last year, Argentina is already making serious progress, their leaders are not blaming anyone, they've rolled up their sleeves, and their efforts are already being felt in Argentina. Less than three months they came to power. In Nigeria, they've blamed virtually everyone, from Binance to the last administration, right now they are cracking down on exports. The government devalued the Naira, which resulted in price increase across board. Nigerians can no longer buy food as a result of that because no one increased their salaries. That's not the case with foreigners from neighboring countries. They can buy Nigerian farm produce because the exchange rate is favorable to them. But the Nigerian authorities are preventing Nigerian farmers and merchants from exporting food. What then is the aim of devaluing the Naira? Was it not to boost exports? Or was it solely to increase government revenue? Anyway, this comparison is to show that many things can be done very quickly if we are determined. Let these people stop wasting our time. There is no sector that they have improved. Everything is worse than they met it. Thanks for watching.